Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good. Good evening. Let me make sure everything is up and running, honey. Make sure y'all can see and hear me. Hope everybody's doing good today. Y'all see me? Okay, okay, good, good, good. I see myself. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to come on and do another live stream because I'm going to be going out of town in like a day. Let me move the camera over so y'all can. I need, I need my damn floating cups to be in frame, okay? I love my backdrop. So I want to make sure y'all can see everything. But um, I'm going out of town in like a day or two. So I want to make sure, you know what I'm saying, to leave y'all with content and stuff before I leave again. But I hope you guys are doing good. Yes, so today I got time. It's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I definitely wanted to hit on the whole Brittany Renner situation again since DJ Academics interview with her went viral and they were trending all day today on social media. And child, I'm seeing a great divide. So we're going to talk about that. Um, I'm trying because I know a lot of people are still having issues with getting notifications. I'm posting everything on my social media pages, on both my Instagram pages. Twitter, Patreon, the Discord, you guys get an automatic notification. Um, what else? Facebook, I posted on there as well. Um, somebody told me, and they sent me a screenshot. I can't find it. I'll find it and post it on Instagram later. But they tagged me on Discord, and they were on their mom's phone, and they were trying to basically subscribe to my channel via their mom's phone. And they got a pop up from YouTube saying that my channel is dangerous. So I am definitely being shadow banned, not only on Instagram, but on YouTube. Hence why I don't get any more than maybe two to three hundred out three hundred dollars, two to three hundred subscribers a month because they are literally shadow banning my channel. She got a pop up saying that my channel is considered dangerous. And do you really want to subscribe to me? So. That really bothered me, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and there's really nobody I can complain to. Um, there's really not anything I can do. So that just lets me know that, um, you know, I, I don't know. It just lets me know, like, it's it's bullshit. It's so unfair that they're messing with my channel like this because I, I really don't do anything. Um, I don't fuck with anybody. I'm not here spreading lies about people, fucking up people's family and money and shit like that. I don't know. I just don't know what it is. Maybe because of some of the topics I talk about, because I'm more truthful. I'm not sure. But that really pissed me off that people are getting danger warnings from my channel. So it just lets me know that I did the right thing by creating my discord and having other streams, other places to speak my truth, like my podcast and stuff like that. So, you know, if anything ever hits the fan, <clears throat> that's why I will be. I will just strictly make videos for my Discord and that will be it. Um, yeah, it just, it really disturbed my spirit to see that. Cause it's like, out of all the people on here who actually do things to not edify people, to really harm people, to just stir up bullshit constantly, they're pushed, they're rewarded, you know, and then it's like, I constantly get punished. So I don't know, I'm not sure. But like I said, I'm going to continue to put out the notifications myself when I go live because for whatever reason, it's not automatically doing it if you're subscribed to my channel. So I guess that's another form of being shadow banned is that they don't let my subscribers know when I go live. So it's really unfortunate. I hate it because then as soon as the stream is over, you'll see a bunch of people in the comments like, I didn't even know you were live. You know, it's like it won't even show them that I'm live when I'm live. It'll send them the notifications after the fact. So just make sure to catch these lives. You know, you follow me on either Instagram page, Facebook, Twitter. You know what I mean? I am, and I don't even use my social media pages as much as I used to. You know, I still use Instagram every now and then just to post stuff, you know, post some funny stuff every now and then, but y'all know my issues with Instagram. Like I'm over a lot of these social media sites. I really am. But I'm going to keep on doing me, 
I'm gonna keep, you know, putting out my dangerous content. Yeah, I don't know what's so maybe these titties is dangerous. Maybe that's what it is. Titties, them titties and make you kapow. I don't know. You know, maybe I got some nine millimeters or some shit. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's dangerous about my channel. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's the breast. Who knows? <laughs> you know, I don't know. But I'm just, I was just shot when she said I was shot in the park. That's what the fuck. How am I dangerous? I don't be doing nothing. But you know what? It's all good. It is all good, honey. It's 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 messed up, but you know, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> so I want to come on here and talk more about the Britney Renner situation. Um, <clears throat> now, like I said before, I didn't know much about this girl. I knew about PJ Washington, just because you guys know. I'm into sports, sports mom. I keep up with all the kids that are going into the NBA and, you know, where they're at. And, you know, I follow a few of them like Mikey and, um, you know, a few others that are really good. And so I know more about Brittany Renner from this situation. So when the situation was first brought to me, you know, via the shade when people were talking about it, it was almost made like this woman went to the high school, stalked him, you know, behind the bushes. And then, you know, while he was on the on the bus going to his next game and he fell asleep, she just hopped on his peen, just hopped on and got pregnant and then ran and was like, hit the lick. I mean, the way people were acting like he's just this, this oh, this wee lad. He's so naive. He didn't realize his peen was hard. She just jumped on it and, you know, just acting like he's just so innocent. And, you know, the more I researched the story, I'm like, I don't understand the problem. They were actually in a relationship. OK, somebody being 26 and dating a 18 or 19 year old, that might not be your cup of tea. And that's fine. But again, it's not illegal. OK, you can frown down on it. It's still not illegal. And let's not forget, PJ Washington comes from a pretty good home. He has both his mom and dad. Not, he's not like the typical, you know, oh, he grew up in the mean streets of Compton. Single mother was a crackhead. He was left to his own devices. And the great white hope coach, you know, rescued him from the ghetto. He doesn't have that backstory. He had a mother and father. So why not, you know, so where were the parents when the 18-year-old was smashing this IG model? It seemed like the parents were probably just as enamored with, with her fame and her status as he was. Let's keep it real. You know, people are trying to say that um, it's, it's considered grooming. I don't consider that grooming. At the end of the day, like what age do y'all want people to be able to have sex? Because the way some of y'all talk on the internet, y'all don't want people to have sex until they're 25, until their, their frontal lobe is completely developed, which is stupid because if that's the case, you know what I'm saying? Why even have shows like Teen Mom? You have a lot of young people, once they get to a certain age, they want to make their own decisions, be it doing, having sex, smoking weed, doing what they want to do. Like I said, I don't consider what she did crewman because they were actually in a relationship. Yes, he was younger than her. But again, let's not act like he didn't know what it was when he went into it. Just like, do you hear me crying about any of the little young girls that Scott Decent be smashing? No, because they know what it is when they go into relationships with him. A lot of young people will get involved into in certain things because they too are chasing fame and status. You can't then turn around and be like, oh, I'm such a kid and I didn't know and I was groomed after the fact. Now, if she was messing with him when he was 15, 16, that's something different. But when she got with him, they said that she was first going to his college game. So by then he was 19. They started dating. And then by the time he was 23, you know, they became parents to their son. So, you know, and then the more I look at her background, okay, she's had some of the top guys in the industry. So if this woman really wanted to be on that, let me go ahead and have, you know, this guy's baby. I think James Harden. Drake and Colin Kaepernick are worth way more than PJ Johnson. I mean, Washington, excuse me, PJ Washington. I'm just saying, if she wanted to get pregnant by some ballers, she could have went down that route a long time ago. 
You know, and I just feel like at this point, a lot of people, look, somebody said she used to date little Uzi. Right. I feel like a lot of people at this point to me, from the conversations I'm seeing on social media and the way that they're constantly dragging her, like I said on my Instagram page, I'm seeing a jealousy factor from both men who want her, who lust after her, but can't get her. And from women who wish they could be in her position. That's that's what I'm seeing from this situation. I, and I just have to keep it real. So I want to go ahead and share with you guys what I posted on Instagram yesterday. And I'm going to play you guys the video of her and DJ Academics. Just a snippet of um, the interview that he did with her yesterday. And I thought the interview, um, I watched the whole thing. It was It was good, but I thought in certain parts he was kind of being overly disrespectful. But I will say that she did hold her own. She really held her own. I respect that. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I wrote on Instagram yesterday. Okay, so here it is. So I said, I'm convinced that a lot of people are now just hating on the fact that hashtag Brittany Renner saw a sucker and she licked it. Because at this point, folks just want to be mad that she came up. A lot of these celebs have significant age gaps. Hell, Diddy was smashing Lori Harvey after his son, after his son was with her, and none of these hip hop commentators said shit. Yet people are acting like PJ was 15 when he knocked up Britney. F out of here. He was just as enamored with her social status as she was with his. A fair trade ain't no robbery. You see AK try to get off of the Jay-Z and Beyonce topic real quick because y'all's not ready for that convo. Y'all elevated this woman to bad bitch status. Now the same men are mad that she used the same status to secure her future. LOL and make um, LOL make it uh, make it make sense. Then I wrote the same way. I don't care about none of these 18 and 90 year old women that Scott D. Sick, a.k.a. Kourtney Kardashian's baby's father is smashing. I could care less about the college age guys that Britney is smashing. All of these folks are using each other. It's all of it's a lot of double standards going on. It may not be your cup of tea, but it's not illegal. So that is what I wrote yesterday and, you know, caused a, a healthy debate. And I was here for it. You know what I'm saying? So let me go ahead and play you guys her interview with DJ um, Academics here. So you guys can hear a snippet of what they were talking about. So give me just a second. Okay. No, 18 and 20, 16 and 20. He so probably like, don't even know he's going to like the fuck. Wait, was he the league at that time? No, he, he was still at Kentucky. Okay. And you're pretty Renner, who he's seen all over the fucking so, media with these Okay, people. so this is what I really get so fucking annoyed about is like, so when do you as men take accountability? You're old enough to ride this ride. You want to fuck with me. You want to... You want to come at me. You want to fuck me raw. So why are we why are we babying men who make decisions for themselves? I like I told you, I was on birth control up until I had a conversation with my baby father. So what do you so what do you think happened? So the I imagine I got, like I got a leg women. lock him. No, let me the like, stop, 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 stop it. Different. No, stop. No, you, it's because men and women are held to different standards. Y'all want to look at a twenty year old who wanted to fuck. I was twenty six when I met him. You want to fuck with me? Here's what it is. No, nope, like, stop acting like someone had to pull the wool over his eyes. I was exactly who I am right now. And so, but stop. Let me finish. There was, I, I have no reason to be, I, I have no reason to lie about any, anything that I've done or the person that I am. And I believe in full transparency. The, the ideal relationship to me is to my, for my partner to know everything about me. So please stop playing this victim narrative. If you wanted to just fuck me and just say you, you uh, she choked me pussy, I hit Brittany Renner. That's that. Why did you get? Why did we have a baby? Our name, it, our baby's name is Paul Jermaine Washington the third. Does that sound like an oops baby? Does that sound like someone who was bamboozled? You asked me to move in with you. You wanted me to have your child at 20, 22 years old, and here we are. I told you I'm okay to wait. I'm not in a rush. I'm a very spiritual person. I trust in divine timing. You're I know trying anything. to get married to him? No, I'm not trying to. I just no, told you. you I was. I thought that was my guy. And, like, I don't know why it's so hard for y'all to believe that. And like, in my mind, 
it's, it's crazy to me that the age gap between Jay-Z and Beyonce, crickets. The age gap between Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan. Y'all don't have the same energy. Lori Harvey's 24. There's a 10-year age gap between her and Michael B. Jordan. Stop. But y'all picking, what's the age gap? I told my, What's that's the age specific, gap? No, because it's, no, no, it's couple no, goals for no, no, people no, that wait, want wait, to become wait. goals with. Okay, no, it's not about being a couple. Stop. It's about certain permanent decisions. Okay, it's, so it's, it's, if, if something doesn't work for me, if, then why would I 30, If someone's 32, and we've seen this. You see with Jay-Z and Beyonce. We address them. Okay. Address them. This is all the record. Beyonce, you don't care. Okay. Address them. When did Beyonce have a child by, by, by Jay-Z? Then when did they start dating? It doesn't matter about the What's the age gap? Nobody's What's the age gap? Hold on. What's the age gap? The age gap is significant. However, oh, okay, is. hear what I'm saying? It's not about that. About any of this shit. You got the, like you had a kid by him before he could even really get his legs. That was on. his I, I choice. I didn't. I don't have to leg lock niggas. You want to fuck me raw and come at me? Accept what comes behind it. That it's child was going. Mm. Honey, put a teacup if you think Britney Renner is a tea sipper. Because I swear, everything I said in my last stream, it sounded like she was regurgitating the shit verbatim. Okay? I believe that she is a tea sipper. She didn't tell no lies. At the end of the day, I believe that PJ wanted this baby just as much as she wanted the baby. He was enamored by her. You know, imagine being a young college dude getting ready to go to the NBA and you pull somebody as popular as Brittany Renner who has 4 million followers on Instagram. She's never lied about who she was. I, I, let's keep it real. How many times have we seen her posted up with damn, with, with, with the, with the home girl, the, the porn star, Tiana Trump. See if I can find that damn picture. This is like one of her best friends. So you mean to tell me like, like people are acting like he had no idea what she was about. She's always running the streets with, with porn star Tiana Trump. Like, let, let's stop playing stupid here, okay? He knew what she was about. She knew what she was on. And now everybody's trying to twist it and make it seem like she's the female R. Kelly. And then I see a lot of people trying to compare her to R. Kelly, and to me, it's apples to oranges. Now, if you are a real tea sipper, you guys know that I've never defended any of the new R. Kelly accusers. I think most of the new accusers like Faith Rogers are full of shit. These bitches weren't crying when R. Kelly was buying them breast implants and, and taking them on shopping sprees. But once the money ran out, they jumped ship. I've always said that. But that doesn't negate a lot of this fucked up shit that R. Kelly did to people, even in his past, that he did not learn from, that he thought he was invincible and got himself caught up in that situation again. It's not the same thing. Brittany Runner don't have a whole bunch of high school boys locked up in her basement somewhere. She's not hiding them and, and starving them and not allowing them to leave the house and all this shit. I, so for people to be calling her R. Shelley, it's just, it's, it's just a reach. And at this point, I'm convinced it's a lot of bitter guys. See, the thing about these type of women, like DJ Academics kept trying to call her a side chick and saying none of these guys were claiming you and you wrote a book about having casual sex. Why is it so bad that she has that persona as a woman, as a woman when a lot of these guys in hip hop do the same thing? Where is DJ Academics to hold account Fetty Wap, Future, and all these other guys who are out here, you know, basically knocking up barely legal young women. They're out here knocking up 18, 19, 20 something year old women, creating single father home, single mother homes. You know what I'm saying? Across the country. None of them are holding them accountable. So let me get this right. It's bad for her to be on birth control and be a proud host. That's what she wants to do. I'm not condoning that lifestyle i'm not saying that's the lifestyle to lead but if that's what she wants to do with her lifestyle with her life as a grown woman that is her business okay it's not like she's out here with seven kids by seven different rappers but these rappers can go from young woman to young woman to young woman and knock them up not claim them go back and forth on social media, not being these kids' lives or pick and choose what kids they want to deal with. 
And none of these hip hop commentators ever have any smoke for these guys. But so many people have smoke for her in this situation. And to me, it just doesn't make any sense. So I feel like this. <clears throat> it seems to me that it's okay for these women to be so-called thoughts and hoes and to be industry passarounds. But the second they take their notoriety and their popularity and they secure that bag by having a baby and are able to collect child support off of it or get married, you know what I'm saying, and be able to benefit off of this whole persona that the internet helped to push, now these guys are mad. Because it's funny that nobody had any smoke for her before she got pregnant. When she was dating him, it was, damn, he pulled Britney Renner. Oh, he's with Britney Renner. Oh, she's bad. Oh, he done came up. But once she got pregnant and had the baby, now whatever happened in their relationship, that's their business. She said that the relationship didn't work out. You know, they decide to go their separate ways. Nobody should be forced to be in a relationship if it does not work out. But once she decided to leave, it seems like that's when she got all the smoke and was said that she used them and she set them up and she got pregnant for a bag. But it's funny, though, when they were just fucking, that was OK. When he was 20, smashing a 26 year old, that was OK because she's considered a bad bitch. But once she was able to basically get pregnant by him and come up, that's where the issue came in for a lot of these guys. And I think it's bullshit. I think it's bullshit. You know, I think it's a lot of guys who like her and want to be with her and they feel a way because, you know, what I'm saying she hasn't had to keep hoeing. Now she can just live off her child support check and be good. Because I'm trying to figure out where's all the smoke for Anna Montana, who is in her 30s, smashing LaMelo Ball, who is also who just turned 20 and she's been with him for a while now. I don't. So it's almost like it's OK for them to use these women as cum dumpsters and, you know, trophies. But then the second they get pregnant, now they're gold diggers, they're hoes. They've been plotting on these dudes. They're for the streets. The hypocrisy is just astounding. I know it's, her name is Anna Montana, not Hannah. Y'all keep saying y'all leave Hannah alone. Anna with an A, Anna Montana. She's a video. Let me see if I can pull her up. She's a Instagram model and she's now come out. She's dating um, LaMelo. I'm trying to see if I can pull them up. But yeah, they're together now and I'm not seeing all this smoke for them. And people have been talking about this for a while, that they're together, but they finally just, you know, they made it official on IG. But that, that's Anna Montana. And that's LaMelo, who plays for the Charlotte Hornets now. So I, I just find it very, very interesting that there's no smoke here as long as these young men are just using these women just like these women are using them. As long as it's, oh, he got a bad IG chick on his arm, it's all good. But let Anna Montana get pregnant by LaMelo, oh, she gonna get the same treatment that Brittany Renner's getting. And I just, I just, I don't agree with it because they were actually in a relationship. This is not grooming. It's not the same thing. Just like I said, when it's an 18 year old girl and she's dating one of these big name celebrities, to me, that's not grooming. That's a young person being enamored by status who want to get taken care of. And a lot of these guys, you know what I'm saying, they're upset because they'll never be in that position to A, get with a chick like Britney. Now y'all can call all types of hoes and whatever else y'all want to call her, but at the end of the day, she doesn't have 4 million followers for nothing. Most of those followers are guys. I don't follow her. Most of her fan base are men. So it's very interesting now that because she's had this NBA ballers baby, she's all types of whores and pedophiles and everything else. Hold on. 
I don't even, I thought I turned this off. I don't know how you turn off these damn text messages. <clears throat> Had to tell them, stop texting. Yeah, I just, I don't like that. I just don't like how bad this woman is getting disrespected and how all these, you know, male commentators are just dragging her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could see this was like her fifth child or every baby father she has is a baller. And that's just her MO. It's, it's very strange. But yet and still, they don't, they don't drag Kamora Lee Simmons, who has several kids by several wealthy men. None of her kids have the same father except for the two girls. She has like three baby daddies. People don't have smoke for her. So I don't know. It's just, it's, it's the hypocrisy. It's almost like, you know, who they like that day. And then people can say, oh, well, what about Tiger and Kylie? People drag Tiger, but not really. People talked about it, but he wasn't drug. He wasn't, you know, interviewed. He wasn't drug all over the breakfast club and all over social media. People had their opinions, but his reputation is still intact. Let's not act like Tiger was shamed and banished. If anything, he was given props. And he was actually smashing Kylie when she was underage. But PJ Jackson, PJ, why do I call him PJ Jackson? I keep thinking about Paris Jackson. PJ Washington, he's not a victim. Y'all need to stop. He's not a victim. Let me read some of these super chats here. Um, let's see here. Uh, Fifi says, Auntie bought the girls out today. Hey, T, this made my day. Hope you're doing well mentally, emotionally, financially, and health-wise. Thank you so much, Fifi. Thank you for coming through, sis. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Steffi Baby says, hey, T, I've been trying to send a super chat for a year. I hope this goes through. I've been a longtime tea sipper. I'm Nicaraguan Pocahontas on IG. All right. Thank you so much for the super chat, love. Appreciate you. Uh, Kelly Anna Couture says, hey, I wanted to send good energy your way. Me and my husband love watching you. It's our bonding time. Safe travels, auntie. Thank you so much. And thank you and your husband for supporting my channel. Appreciate y'all. Um, Nicole Murray says, hey, T, can't wait to hear what you have to say about Brittany. I think DJ Academic is a clown. Um, left my ass off. Hope you have a wonderful trip. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yeah, the, the interview, you know, I think it was cool that he got the interview with her. But I just thought it got, you know, in certain parts, it got real disrespectful because, again, you know, I, I don't understand what people want on social media. In one breath, the Internet praises side chick culture. You know what I'm saying? And then in the same breath, they'll use that same thing to shame her and say that, well, you weren't nobody's main girl. You're just a side chick. And she's saying she wasn't a side chick. Well, nobody claimed you. Well, I'm, I'm confused because in one breath, y'all sit here. It, it's not like these men are faithful. Like, I can understand these are like a bunch of like faithful guys. So which one is, are, are, is the side chick a bad thing or a good thing? It, it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It was like, it was a lot of just double speak and a lot of hypocrisy. You know, everybody's so mad at this age gap. But where's all the smoke for when Jay-Z was smashing Foxy Brown at 16, allegedly? Or when Dame Dash's grown ass was smashing Aaliyah when she was in her early 20s and Jay-Z too. Or all the people, well, hell, remember when Misa was sitting there going off on people for bringing up the fact that she was fucking Diddy underage and she was blocking folks and threw a big tantrum on IG? That's Justin's mama. This ain't nothing new. This been going on. A lot of younger girls like older guys and vice versa. But again, if everybody's over the age of 18 and the law says it's legal at 18, what do y'all want this woman to do? Y'all want her to go back in time and, and, and do what? Erase this whole situation? Because the baby's here now. I, I just, it, it's just really interesting like how angry people are with this situation. I feel like a lot of the anger is also coming from the fact that so many men are pissed off about the R. Kelly situation. 
because they know that that R. Kelly situation has set a precedence <clears throat> and a lot of them can't do the same fuckery that they've been doing low key behind closed doors. Because they're scared of getting that R. Kelly treatment. So now it's let's go ahead and make her a scapegoat. And y'all know if it's a genuine situation of young men being molested, being abused by older women, y'all know I call it out. Y'all, I don't play that on my channel. I, I keep the same energy. Because again, where was DJ Academics to hold uh, Asia Argento when it came out that she was smashing her co-star? A child that she's known since he was about 10 or 11 years old, she was having a whole torrid affair with him by the time he was 16. Did DJ Academics even speak on Asia Argento? Did any of these black commentators besides my channel speak on it? But they're so worried about PJ. I just find that interesting. Let's see here. Jerry Belize says, having a bad night. Thank you for being on. You are more than welcome. I hope your night starts getting better. Thank you for coming through, love. Um, Devon says, I was just thinking about Asia. Yes. The Asia situation was definitely grooming. She had known that young boy. They had starred in a few movies together. She'd known him since he was 12. And as soon as he hit 16, she jumped up on that and had the nerd to spearhead the Me Too movement. And a lot of the people in the Me Too movement were very quiet when it came to Asia Argento, but were super loud when it came to Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, and everybody else. And that was my whole issue. Keep the same energy once it's one of your own. Because she's no different than the men. But to say that this Britney situation is the same thing is just silly to me. So, yeah, it is. It's, it's selective outrage. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah. And then y'all keep writing free PJ. Free him from what? That's his problem now. He was a bit too free with the damn pee. Had he had more self-control or at least use the condom, he wouldn't be in this situation. So free him from what? To me, PJ is living a good life. He's in the NBA. He's making money. He has a beautiful baby. What more does he want? <laughs> free PJ shit. Free, free, uh, PJ needs to stop being so free with his shit. That's the problem now. Out here fucking everything that moves and then trying to play victim. Simone Douglas says, I want to say that I've only been on the Discord for three months. The energy is the most beautiful place ever. Thank you for having it. Oh, thank you so much for being a part of the Discord. I'm so glad that you're loving it on there and that you're loving the energy. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. My Lee. LaFortune says, hey, T, did you hear about the new addition to the Real Housewives of Dubai? What are your thoughts about it? I heard about it today. Um, it's going to be interesting. I'm definitely going to watch and check it out and, you know, see, you know, what it's about. I'm sure they're going to be on a whole different level, you know what I'm saying, of money and, and opulence. So I'm, I'm here for that. So I'm excited. I'm definitely going to watch it. So thank you for that. Um, Double Edged Swords and $13.99. She says, hey, T, I'm kicking myself for missing the Halloween party, but will there be a Friendsgiving? Oh, but I will be there for the Friendsgiving. Knowledge is power and you are opening minds. They don't want that, but we got you. Hashtag Blue Gang. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate it. And yeah, we're definitely going to have a good time during the Friendsgiving party. So, And I did a poll. So everybody decided to do the party the day after Thanksgiving. So make sure you're there. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Carl DMM says, you speak the truth and that's dangerous to people in power because they want us to believe the lies that benefit them. Mm, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Nana Nia said 1999. She says, hey, sis, I got tacos right here. I had to go to your YouTube page to see that you were live. I didn't even, it didn't even come up on my feed. Come to find out I was unsubscribed, shake my head. Anyways, love you. I'm ready for the show. Thank you so much, sis. Yep, and that's another thing. They're slowly unsubscribing people from my channel. Like, I get messages like that literally every day that I've been unsubscribed. I don't know why. I'm not getting notifications. So it's it's crazy what they're doing. 
But, you know, that's why I just have other streams and other ways to for people to hear my message. So thank you so much. Um, Misty Blue Santan, she says, T, did you see the Breakfast Club shouted out a lady T for using her vid when they've been biting you for years, never giving you credit? Charlemagne knows the Breakfast Club ain't shit for that. Child, I don't watch them. But thank you for the super chat. Yeah, unless they go viral for some fuckery, I pay them no attention. The same way they use my shit but pay me no attention, I give them the same energy. But yeah, they, they do that. That's all they do is sip and watch and take notes and then regurgitate it the next day. And they don't just do it to me, of course. They do it to all the YouTubers. But yeah, they pick and choose who they want to support, which is fine. But thank you so much for the super chat. Um... It's just ETV says, I feel no ways about FN. They're both, they both were of age. My concern is for the baby. I hope what she posts for social media likes, but when it's time to be a mommy, she handles that appropriately. Yeah, and I agree. And that was my issue too. That was the only issue I've ever had with her was the whole it's stepdaddy season. I didn't like that. And I guess- Coming to find out more about her, she likes to troll. And I think that's part of the reason, too, why people are messing with her, because she tends to troll a lot. And even her writing, Hide Your Sons, if you don't want them to look at you as a, you know, R. Kelly or R. Shelly, whatever they call her, then let's not troll Hide Your Sons, because it's not like you're trying to go after 15-year-olds. You had a college campus. And on top of that, the whole it's stepson season, no, stepfather season, I didn't like that, because... Her baby's only a few months old. Let's not act like she has a seven-year-old child out here. And when your child is that young, the last thing you should be looking for is for a stepson or stepfather, sorry. Because how many times we hear cases of women having kids and then bringing in a, a, a new dude while the baby's two, three, four months old, and then something happens to that child. The child gets killed. Because the man does not want to take care of the baby, does not want to become attached to the baby. They're just here for the mother. And that's it. Matter of fact, there was a recent case. We were talking about this on the Discord that came out. This idiot. Let me see if I can find it. They just gave him 25 years. This is why it's very important that women be careful all that you know stepfather season bullshit be very mindful who you make a stepfather especially when you have a brand new baby because this idiot here um he just got 25 years in prison he googled how to kill a baby and then fed a newborn girl prescription drugs leaving her in intensive care and so he's been given 25 years I mean, so you have some really sick people out here. So that's been one of my issues with her. Like, you know, it's one thing to troll and joke, but when you have a big fan base like that, females will tend to like listen to you and think, well, it didn't work out my baby's father. I got this three month old baby. Let me go hunting for a new, you know, a, a stepfather. When really your only focus should be is taking care of that child until that child gets to a point where they're old enough to talk and let you know in case the person that you're bringing into the household does something to them. So that's the thing. People need to be very mindful of that. That whole, you know, trying to look for a stepfather. Everybody's not even father material, let alone stepfather material. So that's the one thing I, I disagreed with her on when she was posting that. So I agree. I hope that, you know, with all this stuff that she's doing and this hobo tour that she's going on, explaining herself in PJ Washington, you know, hopefully that she's doing what she needs to do as a mother and just taking care of her child. Um, so thank you for the super chat. Uh, Monique Lowell sent 99.99. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Thank you for always looking out. Um, let's see here. Draco and Kodak says, love you, T. Just stopping by. We'll watch the playback from your first favorite state, Florida. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming through. Um, Helen. Send 500. I think it's in Japanese money. I don't know. <laughs> okay, it is. Says, hey, T, I'm currently in bed feeling under the weather. Sending you lots of love from Japan. I'm just a tea sipper of two years now. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I hope you start feeling better. Thank you. Um, 
Miss Melanated sent 1999 says, this thing is real. I look at a couple of political commentators. One of them said that if she puts black or ADOS in the title, a bunch of negative pages come up first and she's having problems with subscribers too. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a lot of silencing on social media of people who talk on real topics and who have real dialogue and especially people who, you know, who do videos that make people think outside of the box. It's like, that's dangerous in this day and age for some reason to social media. So I can believe that. Thank you for the super chat too, by the way. Um, 50 Shades of Shay, I like that. Says, I've been watching your channel since 2009 at 17. I'm 30 now. You've just outgrown YouTube, moving up and forward. Proud of the glow up, love, um, love your fellow T sister, IT sister. Thank you so much, sis. And thanks for coming through and thank you for the positive message. I appreciate you. So yeah, I just, like I said, to me, um, it was a lot of nonsense during the interview. And of course he's gonna get props for being disrespectful to her and clowning her and stuff like that. But I think she held her own. You know, I think that she did hold her own, which is good. And she did, you know, speak her truth. And to me, when two people are having unprotected sex, and I don't care if you're 20 or 25, you know what it takes to make a baby. And if you don't want a child, then you need to take proper precautions not to create a child. You know, so he's no victim to me. Sorry. Uh Hammett says, DJ Academics brought her on to humiliate her. She wasn't bright enough to see it. PJ ain't no victim either. You look beautiful as always, by the way. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let's see here. The IE Network says, I'm a man and I totally agree with Brittany. That man is grown and wanted Brittany for clout. A lot of backlash is jealousy. Thank you. A man here being honest, <laughs> okay, about this situation. That's how I feel. I feel like a lot of this is jealousy. A lot of the females who are calling her are Shelly and all that mess, even though he was of age. A lot of it is jealousy because either the young girls, they also want an NBA baller and they have to compete with this woman in her late 20s. A lot of the older women feel away because maybe they wish they could have been in that same position at her age. Who knows? But a lot of the guys, they definitely feel away. They do. And they can try and call all types of smuts and whores and all that stuff. But again, she would not have all these followers on social media if it wasn't for a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys made her popular. A lot of the guy, a lot of these guys on social media coined her a bad bitch. You know what I'm saying? And then now they feel away because she ran with that title. You know what I mean? And she pulled somebody in the industry. It's like the craziest thing. Um, let's see here. The one Ari says, let's talk about Drake grooming these young white girls since age is a thing. He'll be on the next one. They are blocking this super chat. No, the one came through, so thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard different stories about Drake as well, you know, but child, that's a whole nother damn stream right there. Uh, KJ23 says, hey T, finally got my husband hooked on your videos. Um, we are watching you together. You gain another follower. Keep being you. Keep being awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, love. So now I've been on here for about, damn, 40 minutes? It don't even seem like it. Time be flying. I thought I was going to say like 20 minutes. So I want to hit on this whole situation with Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. So Scottie Pippen was trending today all over social media. He's basically not over. He He was like... I feel like he's really upset because people compare him. It's almost like the whole Batman and Robin situation. And he's tired of the whole sidekick persona. Not to mention he was mad with how he was portrayed on The Last Dance. Um, that was a documentary that Michael Jordan put out. And this was during the whole lockdown. So a lot of people were watching it. And it seems like he's never gotten over being overshadowed. And so he came out today. He's dropping a new book. What is it called? Um, it's called Unguard. I believe it's called Unguarded. Yeah, it is. It's called Unguarded. Let me go ahead and share this with y'all here. 
So this is the new book. Um, so a lot of people are talking about this because it went viral on social media. Scottie Pippen on Michael Jordan in The Last Dance, he couldn't have been more condescending if he tried. So he wrote a lot of stuff in the book. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just read you guys some of the stuff that was in this article. Let's see here. Like I said, it came out in May. So a lot of people watched it. And he was even saying, too, it was another thing that he was saying that the reason why Michael Jordan even came out with that movie was to basically let this generation know that he's better than LeBron James. So that was another big thing that came out earlier. I think this was the one here. Yeah, TMZ reported on this. MJ used the last dance to outshine LeBron. I was a prop. So they're saying on here, Pippen, who's been outspoken against the mega popular Netflix show, is crapping all over it once again in his home in his upcoming memoir, Unguarded, saying that MJ was so worried about younger fans calling LeBron the GOAT that he decided to release the multi-part series to show off his greatness. Michael was determined to prove to the current generation of fans that he was larger than life during his day and is still larger than LeBron James. The player may consider his equal, but not his superior. Scotty said in the excerpt from the published, um, an expert pub published by GQ. Pippen criticized MJ for making the doc all about him, essentially discrediting the role that Scotty and other Bulls players had in winning so many championships. They glorified Michael Jordan while not giving nearly enough praise to me and my proud teammates, Pippen said in his book. Even in the second episode, which focused for a while on my difficult upbringing and unlikely path to the NBA, the narrative returned to MJ and his determination to win. I was nothing more than a prop. His best teammate of all time, he called me. He couldn't have been more condescending if he tried. Then he also went on to say that um, Michael deserved a large portion of the blame. The producers had granted him editorial control of the final product. The doc couldn't have been couldn't have been released otherwise. He was the leading man and the director. Now, another thing that I found very interesting too, there was another part of the book that came out. Let me go ahead and pull this up. And I feel like this might be the real reason why he's in his feelings, child. Let me show y'all this real quick. Because he's really out here blasting MJ. So now this came out. And so this is a part in the book that a lot of people are saying this is the real reason why he feels away. So he's saying in here, I'm not suggesting Michael wouldn't have been a superstar when uh, wherever he ended up. He was that spectacular. Just that he relied on success to attain um, on the six, on the, yeah, why can't I talk today? Just that he relied on the success that we obtained as a team, six titles in eight years to propel him to a level of fame throughout the world. No other athlete except for Muhammad Ali had reached in modern times. To make things worse, Michael received 10 million for his role in the dock while my teammates and I didn't earn a dime. <laughs> Let's keep it real. That is why Scottie Pippen is upset about the documentary because Michael Jordan was one of the executive producers and he got $10 million for his role. Now, should the other people have also been paid? I think so. I think it's only right. And there's no I in teammate, but everybody, I don't think that the documentary necessarily made Michael Jordan look super good either. I feel like, cause I watched it and I learned a lot about Michael Jordan and a lot of things behind the scenes. And one thing I really learned, like I always heard rumors that he was an asshole in real life, but you could really see it in that documentary. He didn't play. He didn't have a lot of patience. He was definitely a bully at times. So I think that he was pretty fair. Like he didn't come on there acting like he was like this perfect guy with no flaws and everybody just worshiped him. Like you kind of saw all angles. Cause when I left watching that documentary, I was like, yeah, this dude was really an asshole to a lot of people. And he even admitted that, 
you know, even Horace Grant and a lot of people had things to say about Michael that was not really flattering. And surprisingly enough, it was kept in the documentary. He didn't edit it out. He didn't, you know, shorten what they had to say. So I think he was pretty fair when filming it. He kind of showed all aspects of himself. You know, and he owned it. He owned that he could be an asshole and the way that he treated Steve Carr was kind of messed up. You know, so I, I don't know. I just feel like at this point, Scottie Pippen is doing a lot to kind of taint his legacy. He's coming off very whiny. He's coming off very upset, you know, and I don't care who you are. If you were a child during that time, and you were watching, you know, the Bulls win championship after championship you remember that people gave scotty pippen a lot of props like I, I don't know what else he wants like a lot he was like literally his batman to his robin you know michael jordan was just a better player like let's just keep it real scotty pippen was good don't get me wrong but michael jordan was overall he was one of the best players in the league period so that's a lot to be on a team with somebody like that. But it's weird because even when Scottie Pippen was inducted into the Hall of Fame, he thanked Michael Jordan, said Michael Jordan was one of the best teammates he ever had. So I just don't understand the wishy-washiness. Yeah, thank you. A lot of people are saying that they remember. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. Um, the queen is saying maybe his pride is hurt. Maybe that's what it is. Now, I do believe that they did shit on him as far as his deal because he got like $5 million for six years. His contract was bad, but that had nothing to do with Michael Jordan. That was the contract that he chose to sign. And then when he tried to renegotiate, they were willing, but they weren't going to pay him as much as they were paying Michael Jordan. And on top of that, Michael Jordan also made his money from a lot of endorsements. He got a lot of endorsement deals that a lot of people you know, did not have access to. So I, I don't, I just, it's just weird that once again, he's ranting, like he ranted about the documentary when it came out. And I think it was pretty fair to him. I don't think the documentary really made Scottie Pippen look bad like that. I think it just kind of showed us for me that these guys are human. Like I, like, you know, even watching him play through the pain and, you know, seeing the injuries, like, I, you know, being a kid, you look at these people like Greek gods, you know, and to see him like be so sick the night before the playoffs and be throwing up and still get out there with this 100 degree fever and still play through it. That made me respect him even more to know that Scottie Pippen didn't have the best contract compared to other people in the league, but he still played his heart out. That made me respect Scottie even more. I didn't even know anything about Scotty's backstory, his family, and that you know him having all those brothers and sisters. So I don't, I don't know what more he wants. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think instead of shitting on the documentary and throwing all this shade at Michael Jordan, because Michael Jordan never proclaimed to be perfect or you know a quote unquote good guy, I think it'd been better if he used his energy to create his own documentary. I mean, he's writing his own book. But is the book just going to be him dissing Michael Jordan or is it going to also be about your life? I think if you want people to know more about you and you want more shine, I don't think this was a good way to go about it because it just makes him look like a whiny little, you know, like a little whiny girl. Like you're just crying and you're whining and you're upset. And I feel like it boils down to money. I feel like he's upset because Michael Jordan made all of this money off of the documentary. He got all of this notoriety a new generation of kids have gotten a chance to learn more about Michael Jordan's legacy. And I think that that bothers Scottie Pippen. And I think what Scottie Pippen should have done is take that energy and create his own documentary. He could release his own Netflix special, you know, instead of coming out with this book and just going in. So I just found that very, very interesting. Somebody said, ain't nobody gonna watch his documentary. <laughs> Y'all are so shady. Y'all leave Scottie Pippins alone. He's already upset and in his damn feelings. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just think that's what it is, is that at the end of the day, it just shows you guys once again that these celebrities, it does not matter the age. It does not matter the money, the status. It's like people are just people at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And people want to be praised. They want to be remembered. They want to be revered. 
because that's all I got from all, all these little excerpts that came out today from his book. You know, it's like you're spending so much time shitting on your teammate and, you know, trying to, you know, trying to like make his legacy look bad. And it's just kind of weird because Michael Jordan didn't make that documentary to make himself look innocent or perfect. Like it, I, I learned a lot from that documentary and it didn't really leave a good taste in my mouth about Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Like I kind of left that documentary with a lot of mixed feelings, but I kind of, but I really respected the fact that Michael put it all out there, good and bad. So it's just really interesting how upset he is about this situation. I find it very interesting. Let's see here. Um, Bruce Kenton says, happy to catch another live. Just finished uh, some homework, had to show some love. I want to be more active on the Discord, but Brad, but grad school is crazy. Pray for me, laugh my ass off. Love you, love you too, and good luck with everything in grad school. I can only imagine just how much stress you're under. So I just hope that everything works out for you. And thank you for stopping through and showing some love. Um, Marilyn says, "T, I wish you'd stop mentioning how fabulous the Discord is. As I'm desperate to join, it seems." that it's about as likely as Madam Charles getting getting off with the gay guy. LOL, love you and support you all the way, Marilyn. Thank you so much. But it's not me bringing it up, it's the people. But thank you. You know, we'll, we'll probably have an opening again in the future. So just, you know, stay tuned. Um, I appreciate the support. Uh, Jill for real says, hey, T, you're literally my fave. I love you. Scotty and the players should have been paid for the documentary. Yeah, I think that I think that would have been fair. You know, they used his likeness. They, you know, they put him in the interview. And Michael Jordan, he's a billionaire. So, I mean, kick them all a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Look out for your friends. A lot of them are not doing as good as Michael Jordan. So, yeah, look out for them. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But again, People be signing up for stuff and then, you know, you can't sign up for stuff, agree to do something, then want to negotiate after the fact. That's when I was told people, all negotiations start before anything starts. Regardless if you're going to get paid on the back end, you negotiate everything. So if Scottie Pippen agreed to be in the documentary and speak and everything else. Well, at that point, he should have opened his mouth and been like, well, how much am I going to get paid for this? Oh, well, you're just volunteering. OK, then at that point, all you have to do is get his tall ass up. OK, <laughs> grab his briefcase and walk out the damn door. But he chose to sit his big six foot nine ass down in the chair and talk. So, I mean, again, whose fault is that? You, you got to speak. A closed mouth will not get fed. Nobody's going to offer you money. You got to go in demanding it. That's just how it is. He's way too tall to be trying to act shy. <laughs> I'm going to be six foot nine and you know what I'm saying? And, and be shy by asking for your money. You're too tall to be shy, homie. Uh-uh. Okay? I expect the little guys to be shy and timid. Not nobody six foot nine. Better walk out there with your chest. I need $10 million for this shit. Just like Michael Jordan. Well, you're the sidekick. Okay, well, I'll settle out of court for $3 million. <laughs> He ain't going to get what Michael Jordan's going to get, but he could have got something had he opened his mouth. So good luck to him. Hopefully, maybe, you know, maybe his book will sell and fly off the shelves, you know, but I just don't think it's a good look. I think, you know, once again, I'm just tired of these old folks ruining my childhood. Y'all are ruining my childhood legacy. Like y'all just, these old heads, not just them. It's like, if it's not old ass actors and old musicians, y'all have just ruined every 90s kid's childhood with just all this behind the scenes tea that we didn't ask for. We didn't ask for this. Y'all know I'm a sports fan. So it's like, you know, even the documentary, I'm just like, damn, this, this ruined my childhood, but you know, I'm here for it. And then now here he comes with a book. I'm telling you, these folks are messy as hell. And then it makes me think, like, are times hard? Maybe they're struggling like regular folks. Because, it, you know, all these tell-all books and, you know, uh, behind the music and uh, what's the one on uh, that, that show? I was watching it the other day on TV One. You know, those behind the, the, the music TV One documentaries? You know, it's just, I don't know, it's just very interesting. 
It's like, why do people always have to do that? I think a lot of them, they've, they've mismanaged their money. So it's like, let me go ahead and just spill all the tea and tell what happened in the 90s. Unsung, thank you, unsung. Yeah, they be quick as hell, unsung, uncensored, yes. Them shows be cracking me up. I'm like, okay, we didn't ask for all this, but okay. And they want to talk about how all the, this new generation is messy and they take everything to social media, but it seems like the older generation is no better. He's literally, he's been trending all day on Twitter for just gossiping and going in on Michael Jordan. Very interesting. Very interesting. Let's see here. Um, Hamas says, Scotty's just in his feelings again. He used to be one of LeBron James' biggest critics slash haters. Now, all of a sudden, he's LeBron James' biggest fan. And see, and that's the part that's just always weird to me. Because my thing is, don't diss me, right? Because I'm because it seems like a lot of the old school basketball players feel a way about the new ones because there's so much money on the table, right? You got LeBron James making millions from his contracts, endorsements, shoe deals. And then on top of that, um, I believe, I've been saying this for the past two, three years, LeBron James' whole legacy is to hold on and to hold on and stay in the NBA long enough to get Bronny in there. And then it's going to be the the King James legacy, father and son. Maybe they'll both play for the Lakers, maybe they'll play against each other, but they're both be in the NBA. That is LeBron James's goal. Scottie Pippen unfortunately wasn't able to play with his child. Um his is his his son is in the NBA now, but they weren't able to play together. Michael Jordan's kids never went to the NBA. So I believe LeBron gets a lot of hate because he's just been able to like just shatter so many ceilings and he's made so much money because a lot of them did always, you know, used to, he's not all that, he's overrated. And then they would try and side more with Kobe, you know, act like they're such team Kobe fans just to slight LeBron. And then now you want to say, well, Jordan only did this to taint LeBron's legacy. Well, if that's the case, why do you care? You didn't like LeBron any damn way a few years ago. You know, it's just a bunch of just weirdo shit. But thank you for the super chat. Yeah, the king and the prince. I'm t That's what it is. And oh, yeah, let me talk about D-Wade real quick. Oh, should I say anything? Oh, maybe not. I had a really good discussion. I'm going to just say I don't give a fuck. Um, I had a real good discussion with my home, but we talked about the whole D-Wade, Zaire Wade situation. Um, if y'all don't know, Zaire is in the G League, okay? And it was a lot of controversy when he got signed to the G League because Dwayne Wade is part owner of the Utah Jazz, okay? This is my issue. With, with this whole situation. First of all, people have the right to call out the nepotism, okay? We do it all the time with white folks. Hell, y'all did it with Will Smith. His kids are only an actor because their dad's Will Smith. Willow's only singer because Jada has a rock band. So why is it any different when people say that it's nepotism with uh, Zaire Wade and Dwayne Wade. And I'm not knocking him for it, okay? Because white folks look out for their kids all the damn time. There's a lot of white kids who are in positions in Hollywood from producers to writers and hell, modeling, acting, doing all types of shit. Because again, not to be mean, but Sophia Ritchie, there's nothing model-esque about her. She's about five foot five. But yet she gets to wear the title of a model because she's Lionel, Lionel Richie's daughter. Nothing model-esque about her. But she's able to get into the model door because of who she's related to. Thank you, the Trump children. A lot of nepotism there. So we call out nepotism on this channel all the damn time. So I think that whole Dwayne Wade Zaire Wade's situation was definitely nepotism because let's keep it real. Remember, he was not as good in high school when he went to Sierra Canyon. 
He got hurt a lot. Now, he's a good basketball player, but let's stop acting like he was better than the other Zaire. He was not. Remember, Dwayne Wade went on that whole rant. Remember, I did a video about it where he blasted the black coach at Sierra Canyon. And I said, that's foul. That's foul that you were trying to get that man fired and, dis and disgrace his legacy when he's coached many a celebrity basketball player's kids, from Scottie Pippen's kids to Keon, uh, Kenya Martin's kids. A lot of people's kids went to Sierra Canyon. That's where LeBron's son is currently playing. So because... He wasn't, you know, letting Zaire start and Zaire Wade wasn't getting the fanfare that the other Zaire was getting. D. Wade felt the way and pulled his son out of there, right? He eventually graduated. I feel the reason why he's in the G League is because that's another way to try and get his son into the NBA. Y'all not ready for that conversation because if he was really that good, he had been drafted like everybody else, like Lonzo, like uh, Jalen Suggs, like all these other kids who worked hard to get to where they're at. And I'm not saying that Zaire is not a good basketball player. He's just not as good as the other ones. And it's OK. Everybody can't be number one. That's why we have Scottie Pippen. That's why we have the Scottie Pippins of the world. Everybody can't be Michael Jordan. But I believe that is the real reason why he's going to the G League. Because once you're in the G League, you have a better window to get into the NBA because he's fighting to do the same thing that LeBron James is doing with Bronny. Because Bronny will get drafted, best believe. Bronny will get drafted to the NBA. So he's trying to do it where both their sons can play in the NBA. So it's another D Wade, LeBron Wade situation. But like I said, everybody want to act like um, that's not what he's doing. That's exactly what he's doing. Somebody said something about Master P's kids. Oh, yeah. They're another one who benefits from um, nepotism all the way. You know what bothers me about um, even that situation? Now, both of his kids, both of Master P's kids, they can hoop. They are very talented basketball players. But... For some reason, his child, I believe he's number one in the state of Minnesota. He don't even go to school out here anymore like that. But he's listed number one here in the state, which is taken away from another kid to be ranked here in Minnesota. When he's registered in L.A., his AAU team is in Cali, but you're ranked here in Minnesota. It's just like the weirdest thing. But it's nepotism because... The average kid, if if your parents are not rich or famous, you can't just pull your kid out of a top school and bring them to another top school in the middle of their junior year and they get to start. But again, when you have famous parents, these parents have been able to kind of shift their kids around and place them in this school and place them in that school only because of who their parents are. Regular parents, they can't do that. You can't just transfer your kid right now and say, hey, I want my child to go play for Sierra Canyon and be on Brownie's team. You'd get laughed out the gym. So they do a lot of little stuff behind the scenes for this next generation of athletes. Now, again, does that take away from their athleticism? No, it doesn't, because either you can play or you can't play. But it is a lot easier to play if your dad has money and you guys have access to the top coaches and trainers and you've been, you know, practicing and been able to get the coaching from the time you could bounce a ball when you're four. As you know, unlike the average kid who's playing basketball in the hood, you know what I'm saying? And they're going to practice every day. And, you know, to me, I like raw talent like that. And now it's just a lot of the stuff is so manufactured. It's about money and nepotism and, and moving them from this private school to that private school. And well, what school's popping now? Well, let's stack this school up. And the schools aren't going to say anything because they know that's going to bring attention. That's going to bring donations. That's going to bring, you know, all types of stuff. So it's going to make their school look good when they allow somebody, some celebrity's kid to walk on. But the kids who have been there since junior high, hoping to make the, the JV team, well, now you can't because this celebrity kid has taken your spot. 
So yeah, it's sad, but yeah, that's, that's how it works. That's how it works. But yeah, I think that's the real reason, you know, why they got him drafted into the G League. They're just trying to find another way to circumvent the system to get him into the NBA because he wasn't good enough to be drafted directly into the NBA. I said it. It is what it is. <laughs> Somebody said Northwest is about to be in shows and movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kim Kardashian's been grooming her for that. You can just tell by her personality and all of that stuff. She's going to be the next generation of Kardashians and, you know, taking over social media and, you know, doing TikToks and all that stuff. You know, they're getting older now. So now they got to get the next generation ready to take over the legacy. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot, a lot of nepotism. And like I said, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it per se, because that's how the world works. You know, Trump's kids, that their positions in politics was definitely nepotism. So I'm not knocking it, but I'm not going to praise it like, oh, this person is all this and that in that particular sport when they they got on because of who their dad is. Let's keep that real. Let's see here. Um, yeah, the D, yeah, the G League has really good players, um, Roderick. Yeah, some of the, the top players are there. Sometimes they put people in the G League because they need more training. They need more experience. They need more coaching. So, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the G League. But what I'm saying is that because his son wasn't good enough to just get drafted directly into the NBA, he's trying to work him through the G League circuit, you know? And honestly, did that take away from somebody else in the G League who may have been better than his son, you know? So that that's a whole nother conversation. And that's the problem when people are able to kind of circumvent things and get their kids into certain positions that maybe they don't technically deserve. And it takes away from another kid who's just as good, but they don't have that same, you know, backing. They don't have, you know, the connections in those particular industries. Somebody said Megan McCain. <laughs> I agree. She's another one. She's definitely another one. Shaq's kids at UCLA. But Shaq's kids are pretty good, though. It's going to be interesting to see if they end up making it into the league. But they're they're good. I want to see if his daughter ends up making it to the WNBA. Because I know she, though, I think she's like 15. She's like 6'10". His daughter is huge. She's like 6'10". Beautiful girl. I would let his See her make it into the WNBA. I think that'd be so dope if he had his boys in the NBA and his daughter in the WNBA. I think that'd be really cool. Like her height is crazy. She's like as big as her brothers. <laughs> um, let's see here. But not a lot of folks are going to miss that. Um, that's how college works and fraternities and sororities. It's all about who you know. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely, you know, knowing people, getting in certain circles definitely makes the world go round. It's those connections. Somebody says Diddy's son, Christian Combs, his rap career. Not only his rap career, y'all remember when he was modeling? I was like, really? He looked so confused on that damn runway. Again, these people, they just get these positions because of who their parents are. I seen way better male models. <laughs> But, you know, when you go to the casting, you're like, I'm Diddy's son. And you have a bunch of followers. You know what I'm saying? A, a big fan base. Yeah. Lori Harvey's another one. She even took on Steve Harvey's last name to help, you know, push her through the industry. So, yeah, she's another one who benefits from nepotism. But she damn sure don't use her daddy last name, her biological father. <laughs> and the sad part is she benefits more from Steve Harvey's relationship than his own biological daughters. He got identical twin daughters. You barely ever hear about his biological children. You hear more about the stepchildren who took on his last name than the kids that he actually had. It's the strangest thing, honey. Paris Hilton, Snoop Dogg's son. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's a lot of them. It's, it's definitely a lot of them. Um, let's see here. Mad Hatter 35 says, people forget that the Waynes family put on a lot of their family members. Yeah, they did. They did. Thank you for the super chat. But one thing about the Waynes, though, they'll tell you they didn't put on the family members who weren't funny. You had to be funny. So if you weren't funny, you either worked behind the camera, you took out the trash, you did the secretarial work. So everybody that was funny is who they put in front of the camera. And what they did was definitely different. That was like innovative because they created that sketch show with, you know, uh, in living color and things like that. So that was dope because that was something different. But they were all talented, though. So that was another thing. Like all the weigh-ins for the most part are funny, you know. So, yeah, they definitely put each other on. Roger Pop says, hey, lovely T, keep being funny and un keep being your funny and smart, un unapologetic self. <laughs> the truth will always hurt, especially when it's necessary. Thank you so much, Roger P. Appreciate you. Uh, Sugar Cookie Mon says, hey, you better copyright Kardashians next generation. Oh, yeah, you know they're preparing for that. They're definitely preparing for them kids to take over the whole franchise, the whole brand. They are. So now before I go, because I've been out here for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, oh, yeah. Coy LeRae, she's another one. Her daddy's Ben Zeno. You can't tell me he didn't pull some strings. Now, I will say she finally got the audience rocking. I seen the video on The Shade Room where she was performing my twin in them. And I like that song. The audience was actually feeling her this time. They were dancing. They were singing along. Usually when she gets on stage, I, I don't know if this is like some type of meme where everybody just sits there and looks like zombies. Like nobody moves. Nobody says anything. So it's been, you know, it's kind of become synonymous with her shows that people don't rock out to her. But they finally did at um, this last show that she did. So I thought that was funny. I think she's getting better. Uh, Lachey says that's because if Marjorie Harvey and Steve ever divorce, they don't have no other connections to the industry. Lori needs to make a name for herself. Steve's kids don't need it. Well, she's definitely made a name for herself, you know. Hell, she's with Michael B. Jordan now, so she has definitely benefited her. She's made a name for herself. But, you know, she's a really pretty girl, too. So, I mean, that helps. She was hype as hell on that set. Yeah, she was. She was definitely hype just because, you know, like people do not rock out to her for whatever reason. So it's like I got this, the, the stage. I'm rocking it. The fans are feeling me. You could tell like she was like genuinely happy, you know, so I like her. You know, I don't think her music is a lot of mumbling. I don't know what the hell she's saying, but I like her energy. You know, I just like her style because she's different. And I like that. So let me go ahead. I want to speak on the whole Nene Leak situation before I go. Um, so if you guys do not know, Nene Leaks has been going through it. Let me hold up. There it is. So she's been going through it as of late. Um, Greg Leaks, her husband, passed away, I believe it was about a month ago. And so she was on the radio station. And I don't know if the station was just being messy, but they decided to ask her you know, has she heard from the cast? Did they did they send flowers to her? Were they being supportive? And Nene just kind of went on a whole tirade. So a lot of people have been talking about this. I'm gonna go ahead and play the play you guys this video. Give me just a second here. <coughs> Cassie, um, every housewife in the entire franchise, you know, reached out to me. Kim Zosia definitely had texted me. Since Greg has passed and she has stayed in touch since then. So I would say that we are okay. No. A lot of people say that. No. She didn't even come to the repast. She did come like a week later after everything was done. She came by my lounge. It's really hard to explain housewives. It's almost like a dysfunctional thing. But they all reach out, they all sent flowers or um, actually, I was surprised because the first set of flowers I got was a bouquet from like all the housewives. Like they went in together. I'm like, why do y'all need to go in together and buy some damn flowers? 
Right, and you know, if all of y'all work, you don't need to, let's go in together and buy $200 worth of flowers, right? You can spend your own $200. That's the way I've always. I don't know what the hell that music was in the background, child. Okay, let me come back on the screen. So that was her. So she was kind of ranting about like them all going half on the gift and, you know, Cynthia not coming to the repast. So I kind of was like, well, why even bring all this up? So then TMZ confronted Cynthia about it, <laughs> 50 Cent. And she was very surprised and very hurt. I'm not going to play it all, but I just want to show y'all this. No, I didn't. I didn't. At this point, I feel like I've really tried to, you know, at least have a respectful, cordial relationship with her. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm very well aware that we're not friends. But because we've had so much history and we, you know, been on the show together, I at least wanted to be in, you know, a respectful place with her. But okay. So Cynthia was just basically talking about how she was hurt that, you know, Nene would say that. So then Claudia Jordan. Funky Dineva and um, Al Reynolds, they were talking about the topic because as we know, Claudia Jordan was also on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And um, so they had a lot to say about it as well. So give me just a second to pull it up. Okay, so this is them talking about it here. I'm cool when our friends were nothing, you know, we're, we're nothing. But I, out of respect for Greg, I did send condolences and I never made it public. I didn't put it out there or post something or tell the world and whatever. But I did feel triggered when she posted, when she when I heard about the story, I'm like, hold up. No one owes you anything. I mean, we didn't have to spend one dollar. It has, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with your husband and paying respect to the man that we all got to know and love who was so supportive and kind, even when you were beefing with his wife, he was still a class act. And Nene, I can't tell you how to grieve because, again, I've never lost a husband. I've never lost a mate. I'm not married. I just have a boyfriend. But, like, it just, it's just its such a tacky thing to, 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 did you Google how much the flowers cost? Like, don't, the, the, the things that you said about other people, you're lucky that anyone even showed up for you, actually. Mm. Um, it's no secret that her and I do not, we're not cool, we're not friends, we're not. Okay, so that's the same thing. So basically, um, she ended up speaking about this, Nene did. Let me come on screen. So she ended up talking about uh, the situation, like I guess trying to explain herself. And then she also, you know, kind of hit on the Claudia Jordan thing as well. So let me go ahead and show y'all this. Give me just a second here. I was asked about gifts that were given. No, before I was asked about that, I was asked about if Cynthia attended Greg's repast. No, she didn't. I answered the question very honestly. I'm a very honest person. Um, she did not attend. Did I? Did it bother me that she didn't attend? No. Seemed like it bothered other people because other people were always coming to me asking me about it. It didn't bother me. She showed up a week though later at the lounge. Great. We had an amazing time. I think she said somewhere we had a great time. It was awkward for about 10 minutes and we had a great time. We had an amazing time. We laughed, we partied, we had a ball. It didn't really bother me, okay? It just didn't. Greg's sickness was what it was. He understood what he was going through. He knew he was going to die. We had these conversations a trillion times, okay? I was asked New York and Marlo brother passed and I sent, you know, things to cater for Marlo. And, uh, but later, Candy sent me a huge, huge bouquet of flowers. We text each other. I told her how much I thanked her. Marlo sent me a, uh, money after that uh, to buy things with for the repass. Um, I, I'm grateful for everything. Like we, okay. So let me go ahead and read to you guys what Al Reynolds said because he's really good friends with Nene. So he was kind of caught in the middle because Funky Dineva was going. If you watch the full thing, Funky went in. Um, Al was sitting there just sipping from this damn Red Bull because um, he was like, "I'm almost scared to talk." So this is what he said. 
He says, I woke up this morning to a crazy number of texts and DMs asking me why I sit there and let my co-host at Claudia Jordan talk about my friend Nene Leakes. At Shade Room, Neighborhood Talk, Hollywood Unlocked, both Claudia and Miss Funky Dineva know Nene and the Leakes are like family to me. I was a groomsman in Nene's wedding and I spoke at Greg's transition celebration. Our show TGIF at Fox Soul is an unapologetic show where people speak their mind without a filter. I have nothing to do with that. What I do have control over is how I made my friend Nene feel. She is grieving the loss of her husband. I want to apologize if I made her feel unprotected by me. As I told you personally, I would address the situation publicly. I will continue to love and support you. <coughs> Now, let me say this. I don't like that. I don't like that. One, those are your co-hosts, okay? And see, this is the thing that if you're going to do commentary, that is what comes with commentary. And especially when you're in the celebrity realm. Every now and then, somebody that you're close to will be a topic of conversation. And you have to be able to keep the same energy. You can't in one breath say that this is a show and, and we're unfiltered and we say what you want to say. But then in the same breath, he's like, as I told you personally, I would address the situation publicly and apologize. What are you apologizing for? Are you apologizing on behalf of your coworkers? Because what they said was their truth. And I don't even think that Claudia, honestly, I don't think she was being disrespectful. I think Funky's just his funny self. I don't even think he was being disrespectful. He was stating how he felt about the situation. So for you to, I think I respected him for kind of just sitting there being quiet because he has a relationship with her. So if you're not going to check them, then just sit there quiet. But that's the thing. Everybody wants to do commentary and jump in the commentary game. But then when it's something that they rock with, now all of a sudden they're walking on eggshells and those are my coworkers, I can't control them. Treat it the same way you would if y'all was talking about anybody else and you didn't have a relationship with them. It wasn't like he disrespected Nene, you know? So I think with him taking the social media to apologize, it's kind of low key throwing his coworkers under the bus, you know, because I don't think either one of them said anything disrespectful. Now, I will say this. I feel like Nene's definitely mourning. She's going through it. You know, she's lost her husband of so many years. And Greg is a really cool guy. You know, I got a chance to meet both of them. And he was just really awesome. You could tell they really have genuine love for each other. You know, but Nene also has to take accountability that there'd be nothing to talk about. There'd be no topic of conversation. Has she not answered that question that I think was like V105 or whoever, the, the Tigger show in the morning, had she not answered it like that, there'd be nothing to talk about. V103, excuse me, the big Tigger show, V103. They, there'd be nothing for them to run with. They asked her, did Cynthia Bailey come? Did the Real Housewives, you know, send condolences? Did they send flowers? So it's like, you can't, be shady in one breath and then turn around and play victim in the next. Because all she had to say was, yes, everybody sent their condolences. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the flowers and moved on. She chose to say, well, they all chipped in like they couldn't afford, you know what I'm saying, to send me their own thing of flowers. I felt the way. She never made mention of the candy situation until after people started dragging her. Then it was, well, well, Candy ended up sending me flowers after the fact, and I appreciate that. And one of the things, if you watch the video, she said the reason why she felt the way is because when Marlo's brother passed, she sent, you know, catering and did all this for his repast. She did the same thing for Todd's mom. Uh, when Todd's mom passed, she catered the whole repast. So I guess she felt like these co-workers or you know friends of hers on the show could have did more but she also has to understand that she was in a different time and space with these people at that time when she left the show she kind of left 
you know what I'm saying, left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths because she was trying to get the show canceled. She didn't want people watching the show. And this show is still everybody else's livelihood, regardless if she decided to stay on the show or not. So I'll chop some of it off to Nene grieving. And I don't think that it was an appropriate question for them to even ask her. I think that they were kind of being messy because why even ask her who sent flowers and who came to the repast and the, like, like why even ask that? You know, just ask about her mental health and how she's feeling. So maybe had she been in a better frame of mind, she would have she would have understood that was kind of a setup question and not responded in the way that she did. And I believe in the video with Cynthia's response that she was genuinely hurt. Because like she said, you know, I went to bed yesterday, everything was all good. And I wake up this morning, I'm getting drugged for not going to Greg's repast. But she said they had there were other plans. What those other plans were, I don't know, not my business, but she couldn't make it. But she ended up connecting with Nene afterwards and thought that everything was all good. So then for her to feel like she's getting thrown on the bus again, she definitely felt a way. So I think that had Nene not put it out there, there'd be nothing for them to talk about. But I just I didn't like the fact that Al was being so apologetic because I don't think that neither Claudia or Funky were wrong in their opinions. You know, again, it's a commentary show. See, everybody wants to be a commentator until it hits close to home or until it's something that they rock with. You can't care. If you're going to do commentary, do commentary. You know, somebody's in the news for something regardless of your relationship. Now you're going to drag her and talk about, you know, her in a bad way? No, of course. But you also have to keep it real. And keeping it real is also holding, you know, so-called friends to task. And saying like, you know, she maybe been going through a lot, but this was also messy for her to say that. And I understand Claudia for feeling away. Because when you're saying that all the, the black housewives from the Atlanta franchise chipped in on some flowers and I was a part of the franchise at one point in time, I would feel away too. And like she said, she never made it public that she reached out or that she sent anything, which is the right thing to do. It's, it's not a time to show about. This is a showboat. This is a man who lost his life. So she did right by not saying anything on social media. But I think she had the right to defend herself because the way Nene put it out there was like nobody did anything. Everybody just chipped in and went, you know, went their separate ways. But, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll attribute it to her mourning and still going through stuff. But I think like him apologizing, that was a bit much, you know. Oh, I told her I would apologize publicly. Well, I, I don't think I don't think that episode was disrespectful. And I think that he's more bothered because people are feeling like, well, why didn't you say more? Why didn't you have her back? You were in her wedding. I'm sure Nene probably chewed him out. Hence why he ran to apologize. But again, he low key threw his coworkers under the bus. So I just I didn't like that because I feel like and I don't care if it's the Breakfast Club, if it's Fox Soul. When you're doing a show and you have multiple people with you, if it's the view, you know, whatever, y'all are supposed to, you know, have each other's back. Now, I'm not saying if that person is like just all the way wrong or out of pocket. Yes, you can check them. But like I said, if you listen to the whole show, I don't think that anybody was wrong with how they were feeling or their commentary on the situation. So I think he should have had his coworkers or co-hosts, whatever you want to call them, he should have had their back more as opposed to kind of throwing them under the bus and then apologizing to her. Because if you didn't watch a whole show, you would think that they would have just been disrespectful. Nene's just being Nene. That's why I rock with Wendy Williams since her New York radio show. She talked about you no matter what. Yes, uh, that's my point. If you're going to be in the commentary game, regardless of the relationships that you build, if it's a viral story and it's something that the people are talking about, you got to be honest with how you feel. And that's the problem is that people want to do commentary, but then walk on eggshells when it's their faves. So thank you for the super chat, sis. Um, Michelle Capri sent $99.99. Thank you so much, sis. She says, been watching you for a while. Just got a great job and finally able to show my support. Thank you for being you. Here, um... Sweet T81 says, we appreciate you for keeping it 100 with everyone. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming through, love. 
Uh, let's see here. Sophia Senpai says, hi, looking good. Just ignore the idiots. Keep being you. Trust me. I will be. I'm going to always be me, honey. Trust to believe. Thank you so much, love. Um, Black Joker Kane says, left work. Left work in the hospital because of stress. 90% of the staff is left. No! Y'all can't keep leaving the hospital. What is going to happen during this dark winter? When folks need to be hospitalized and folks have to come in to get checked out and like half the staff is gone. Like that is crazy. It's so many people just like quitting their jobs. It's insane. Now, speaking of Joker, did y'all see that it's the Asian man who was in the subway on Halloween stabbing people dressed like the Joker? Let me see if I can find that. That was a crazy. And he was sitting there smoking. It seems like all of the predictive program and movies are coming to fruition. I think it was in, was it in China? Let me see. It might have been China or in Japan. But he was just stabbing. Here it is. It was, Jap it was in Japan. Japanese man in Joker costume injures 19 people. Let me show y'all this since your name is Black Joker. It just reminded me of that story. This was crazy. He injured 17 people in a knife attack on Tokyo. But the creepy part is if you watch the thing. This is insane. He's just stabbing people. Trying to climb out windows. Let me see if I can find the picture. What is this man's name? He was dressed like the Joker. But the creepy part is when they when they went to capture him, he was sitting in the back of the train. Just smoking a cigarette like he did, like he hadn't just stabbed 17 damn people. I'm gonna see if I can find the picture. Cause people initially thought that it was like some type of Halloween stunt, but it wasn't. He really stabbed these people. I'm trying to see if I can find the picture from smoking the cigarette. And it looks just like the Joker from the movie. Here it is. They've arrested him, but look at this picture. Do y'all see that? Like when I seen that, it just creeped me out because he's so calm with it. And he's just literally just sitting there smoking. Like he didn't just stab all these people. I'm telling you, we're living in a crazy, crazy world. You know, and that happened on Halloween. So yeah, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of mess going on. But your name just reminded me of that. That's how I brought that up. Like, did y'all see that shit? And then the way he was just smoking on that cigarette, like he just had no care in the world. He gonna plead insanity. Just watch. Let's see here. I uh Ayana Hopkins says, T, you are a Leo for real. LOL. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ayana. Appreciate you, love. Um, Notoriously Zen says, your troll wasn't ready for your smoke. She must be new here. LOL, love you. <laughs> yeah, you know she is, honey. She thought she could write some bullshit and I wasn't going to see it. I don't miss a whole lot. Thank you so much, sis. Um, Letitia says, I'm shooketh. <laughs> Y'all are a mess. Uh, graciousness says, I just switched over to your channel. Sadly, you were vexed. Anyways, I wanted to send you some UK money, pound sterling for one of your super chats from a previous live. You're beautiful from an African BM. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, love. Thanks for coming through. Uh, Queen says, one thing for certain, two things for sure. T will clear a bitch. <laughs> 
Y'all are a mess. Thank you so much for the super chat, y'all. Um, let's see here. Uh, hold on. Black Joker said another five. He says we're leaving because we're tired and literally getting beat on by patients. We fighting people like we're in a bar fight. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry to hear that. That ain't cool. Yeah, I know a lot of people right now, they're calling it the great resignation. A lot of people are leaving their jobs. Um, a lot of people are fed up. So, I mean, you have to do what you have to do for your mental health. But it's still scary because it's like, what's going to happen, though, when people, you know, who are not there to beat up nurses and doctors come in, you know, actually needing help? So, I, I don't know. But then you you have the government talking about they're going to bring in the National Guard. Good luck with that shit. But y'all won't have them unloading the docks. That's what I don't understand. So I find that very interesting as well. But thank you for the super chat. Um, Helen says, yo, T, that was in Japan, in Tokyo. And look up train attacks. A lot of the train attacks, there's been a lot of train attacks recently. Wow, he traveled from another area to do this. Wow. Thank you so much, Helen, for that update. I appreciate you. Um insert famous oh oh insert female username says t you are flawless can we see your nails they look cute thanks for the live you are so welcome thank you they're like uh purple with a light blue color i don't know if y'all can see them but yeah that's my nail <laughs> but you guys i've been on here for an hour and 47 minutes. This was a great stream. I think we talked about a lot of stuff. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Hit the like button. If you guys have not hit the like button, the like button is definitely free. So make sure you guys hit on that. Um, I am going to, I'm, I think I'm gonna do a video on that tomorrow. I wanted, cause a lot of people keep sending me um, this story about this high school when they did this child whole strip show. I'm going to do a YouTube video on that because I want to talk about that fully. So I don't want to talk about it in this stream, but I'm going to definitely do a YouTube video tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Um, so on that note, you guys, thank you once again for joining me. Thank you guys for the love and support. Thank you for, you know, just, just loving on me, regardless if, you know, if I have to pop off every now and then, I appreciate y'all for just allowing me to be me, Okay. So on that note, you guys, I will talk to you guys later. You guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a good night. Bye.